Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and today I'm gonna to be trying out my latest cooking appliance purchase. So I'm really excited about this one because it is new to me. This is the Country Smokers Traveler wood pellet grill. Now I got this from Wayfair.com. It costs about 200 bucks, and I've also seen it for sale directly from Country Smokers website for around the same price. And you can also get it from Lowe's for around the same price too, but Wayfair offered free two day shipping, so I decided to go with that. So what is this thing exactly? Well, it's all in the name. The Country Smokers Traveler Wood Pellet Grill does all of that. It is a smoker, it is a grill, and it's travel size. As you can see here, I just have it in my backyard on this makeshift table that I made. And it's really designed for people who are gonna be going out you got an RV, your trucker, your tailgating, something like that, you'll be able to cook on the go. But also for folks like me who have really small families and don't need to feed a whole lot of people with a whole lot of food, so something like this is perfect for my needs. I left a little sticker on here so that you can see approximately how big it is. So it's got 256 square inches of cooking surface and the hopper has a capacity of 3.5 pounds. Right here, we got the thermometer right there in the center so you can know what the temperature internally is. We got these two flaps right here to keep everything closed. And then we have our temperature control and settings right there on the left side. Really, really simple stuff. Let's open it up so you can see what it's like on the inside and tell you a little bit about pellet grills in case you're not familiar with them. So in order for a pellet grill to work, you need a couple things. You need electricity, and then you also need wood pellets. This part over here is called the hopper, which you can open up and then you can dump in whatever type of wood pellets that you wanna use. Cool thing about wood pellets is they come in a variety of different flavors. You got hickory, you got cherry, you got apple, you got mesquite, mesquite whatever you prefer and you fill it up in here. And then at the bottom, there's this thing called an auger, which will push the pellets into the firebox which will then heat up the grill according to whatever temperature you put it in now when you get this there's going to be some minor assembly required no big deal we've got two sets of legs on the bottom of this it comes with screws all you have to do is just unscrew the screws connect the legs and screw them back in and then you also have to connect the grease trap that's on the right side other things that you get with this is a couple different grill grates. You have a regular grill grate right here. And then you also have this smaller attachment on the top that comes off and on. I'm going to leave it on for right now. And then this metal part right here is called the heat deflector. Now this comes in a couple different parts. The part on top, you can slide back and forth because when the fire pot is really, really high and flames are coming up, if you don't want the flames kissing your food, you can use this and just slide it over. You don't have to worry about that. And then underneath the heat diffuser, that's the fire box that I was talking about. Way deep inside there, there's this little nozzle that gets really hot and that's what's gonna set those pellets on fire. And the pellets are all gonna drop into here and they are going to come from the auger, which empties out the pellets right there. So, you know, in essence, it's really simple stuff and it's really interesting and it's really kind of cool because it's very efficient. You can get a 20 pound bag of pellets for about 10 bucks. Kind of just depends on where you're shopping. Now, seeing as this is the first time I'm using this, I'm gonna try it out by smoking a chuck roast, which is gonna take many hours to do and hoping that the weather really holds up and that it doesn't rain. But before we can do that, we actually need to prep this thing, which is recommended for the first time. So we're gonna to have to prime the hopper first. And then after we're done with that, we have to do a grill burn off to get rid of any kind of foreign matter or whatever that might be left over in there from the manufacturing process. So. I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna prime the hopper. All right, so let's prime this hopper. First thing that I gotta do is make sure that there's no obstructions, there's nothing clogging the auger, everything's fine, it's brand new. And we also have to take everything out of the grill. Now, we got the control panel down here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it to the smoke position. I'm gonna make sure that everything is uh, working properly and then also I'm gonna let this run for about a minute and I'm gonna put my hand above the fire pot. It should begin to get warm, don't touch it. And then once that's done, we're gonna start putting the pellets in. Okay, so everything is working properly. I can smell the igniter. I can feel the air getting 
hotter right there so everything is working just fine so at this point i'm just going to turn it off and now we can fill the hopper let me show you what kind of pellets i'm going to be using for this chuck roast that i'm going to cook now i've got some traeger pellets on the way but i wanted to get this started as soon as possible so i saw that walmart had some of this cuisinart cherry rum premium cherry wood pellets made from real drum barrels so according to them this is good with beef chicken pork lamb and seafood i'm cooking beef so that's what we're going to be using and i'm going to fill the hopper with this the hopper can take three and a half pounds worth of pellet so let's load it up all right so now that we've done that we're going to close this up i'm going to turn this back on to the smoke position now, according to the instructions, we're gonna give this a few minutes, and then in a few minutes, that auger is going to start pushing the pellets into the fire pot, and then as soon as that happens, we're gonna be pretty much good to go. I'm gonna turn this off, and I'm gonna put everything back in, and then there's one more step that we need to do before we can actually start cooking on it, so stay tuned for that. So now that the hopper is primed, we know that everything works properly. Now we need to do one more thing and that's the grill burn off. We need to have this run for about 30 or 40 minutes so that I can get rid of any nasties that might be in there. In order to do that, we're gonna close this down and then you just have to set a temperature on anything 350 degrees or higher. So I'm gonna turn it up to 350 degrees and then once it reaches that temperature with the lid down we're going to just let it go for 30 40 minutes then we'll finally be ready to cook on this thing so while that's doing that i'm going to take you back to yesterday where i prepped the chuck roll so i can let you know everything that i did beforehand then we're going to come back out here and smoke it so it's the night before i fire up the country smokers pellet grill for the first time and i wanted to prepare this chuck roast so that it's able to sit in the refrigerator and absorb all of the really simple seasonings that I'm going to put on it. So I chose chuck roast because this is the first time that I'm smoking something and I didn't want to go too crazy. And it's a relatively inexpensive cut of meat. This weighs about 2.94 pounds. So let's just call it three pounds. And I got it from Target and it only cost me a little over ten dollars so not bad at all and what i'm going to be doing is i'm just going to season it really simply with some salt i got pepper i have garlic powder and then i've seen people who seem to know what they're doing when it comes to smoking they use a binder i've seen people use olive oil i've seen people use different types of liquid but for me i'm going to be using this Worcestershire, Worcestershire, I mean, I don't really care how you pronounce it, but you know what this stuff is. So I'm gonna put the Worcestershire, 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 whatever sauce on this, and then I'm just gonna sprinkle the salt, the pepper, and the garlic powder on top, and I'm gonna do that on both sides. All right, cool, so now that I got that all nice and seasoned, I'm gonna cover this up with some foil and I'm gonna stick this inside of the refrigerator. It's going to stay in there overnight. So by the time I actually start smoking this thing, overall, it's probably gonna sit there and marinate for about mm, 10, maybe even 11 hours. So uh, yeah, come back when we are ready to take the grill out. So I decided to let the unit cool down completely so that I can show you what it's like to start it up from cold, you know? You just want to get out here and start cooking. What do you have to do to get it from being zero degrees to whatever temperature that you want to cook it at? All right, so normally you would think that all you have to do is just turn it to whatever temperature you want, let it get up there, and then you can start cooking. But that's not quite how it works with this here pellet grill. First thing that we have to do is we have to turn it to smoke and we have to lift up the lid. So we're just gonna look inside the hopper. We still have plenty of pellets left. And then from here, we're just gonna turn to smoke. And what's gonna happen is that the auger is gonna start feeding the pellets into the firebox and it's gonna create a nice thick white smoke. And then once that white smoke dissipates, that's when we can set it to the temperature that we wanna cook at and then put the meat right there on the grate. So that's gonna take a few minutes or so. So when that white smoke starts coming up, I'll let you look at it and then when it's done, we'll set the temp and then we'll start cooking. 
Okay, so can you see that? I hope that you can see that. We're starting to get that thick white smoke come out of the grill. And that is a good sign. It's exactly what it's supposed to do. So don't worry when yours does that. So now at this point, we just have to wait. I don't know, maybe like a minute or two. This thick white smoke is going to go away. It's going to dissipate. That flame's going to really kick in. And then we're going to set our temperature. Now I'm going to be cooking the chuck roast at 225 degrees. It's going to take a long time for this to be completely done so we're in it for the next several hours so as you can see as i was talking the white smoke is gone it's completely dissipated so now we can set the temperature so at this point i'm going to lower the lid and i'm going to set it to 225 degrees the unit the digital readout says that it's currently at 120 and then there's a set um, right here at 225 so we're gonna wait till that gets up to 225 and then we're gonna put on the roast so let me tell you what's going on here so after I set it to 225 degrees after that thick smoke had dissipated I sat there and I watched the temperature and it just kept climbing 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 and it was like at 350 360 degrees and it's pretty warm out here today so I know that that's going to have an effect on the temperature but I didn't think it was going to have that big of an effect on the temperature so what I decided to do was just turn it back down to the regular smoking option and the temperature is starting to come back down the digital readout says 310 and the thermometer up there has it a little under 300 maybe like 375 or something like that so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do it like this okay so I got the chuck roast right here I'm gonna open this up and I am going to put it down in the grill this most likely will make the temperature uh, go down and drop. I had a little bit of foil stuck to it. All right, let's put that there. There we go. Nice big hunk of meat. So we're gonna close this down. All right, so at this point, all we do now is wait it's going to take a good while for this to be done so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back in about three hours or so and i'm going to oh, the smoke's getting to me and then i'm going to um put the meat thermometer in there and see where we're at once we reach about 165 degrees i'm going to take it off i'm going to wrap it in parchment paper then i'm going to put it back on here and i'm going to let it cook until it gets to about 200 degrees and then We'll let it rest and then we'll see um, how well we did. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I will uh, see you in a few hours. So let me give you a little bit of an update on what's going on out here. So it's been about a half hour since I started this up. And like I said before, when I had the dial set at 225 degrees, the temperature was shooting straight up. I had no idea what was going on. So I brought it back down to smoke. After about 20 minutes or so, I came back out here and the temperature was looking at like 200 degrees or so. It was fairly consistent between the digital readout and the manual readout up here. So that was too low. So I bumped it back up to 225 degrees and the temperature did rise and it seems to be holding steady at around on the 235 mark there is a discrepancy between this one and this one you see like this says that it's 255 degrees it was as high as 270 degrees not too long ago but i would trust this thermometer over the other one and this one has it uh it's around like 240 right now so between 235 and 240 which i think uh, that's acceptable isn't it um, I'm outside, it's almost 90 degrees here in Georgia, and apparently outside ambient temperatures can affect this kind of thing. But yeah, I'm just kind of learning as I go along, so I just wanted to keep you updated on uh, the progress here. And ever since I turned it back to 225 after everything cooled off, it seems to be holding steady at just under 250. So um, yeah, 
we will see what's going on from there. And also a contributing factor, it might be the pellets, maybe different pellets tend to burn hotter, I don't know. Let me know in the comments the different things that can affect the temperatures of, uh, of the pellet grill when you're uh, using it. So yeah, I'll come back in a few hours. All right, gang, it's been about three hours. Now just checking the temp on this, the temperature gauge on top has this sitting at about 360 to three or 260 to 270 down here in the digital one it says that it's 270 it's about 90 degrees out here it's pretty hot the sun is pretty much directly above us that might have something to do with those temperatures there but let's open this up and let's take an internal temperature read on this meat all right so that's what we're looking at right now looking like right now one thing that i did do that i didn't film is i uh, got some better than bouillon and i mixed up a little bit of it and i came out here only did it once and i just brushed this a little bit with the better than bouillon i wasn't going to at first but then i you know i forgot that i had it so um, some people do that every hour i just did it once because i thought why not all right so we're getting pretty good and dark here. Let's uh, let's check the temperature of this internally. So this is reading like 154. Let's get more towards the center. This is about 150 there over here. Much hotter. That says like 170 over here. 151 153 here 154 so what we're going for is about 165 that's where I wanted to be at before I wrap it and we're not quite there yet um, for the most part so we're about 10 degrees off but we're pretty close so I'm gonna let this go for like another 20 25 minutes or so and then I'm going to come back and we're going to recheck the temperature. And then once we get 165, then that's when we'll wrap it up and uh, let it cook until it gets up to 200. So we'll be back. All right, gang. So I've been checking out the temperature and we have reached around 165 degrees, maybe like around 162, 163 in some areas. But now I think that it's time for us to uh, wrap this thing. So let me open this up. Take a look. So this is what the chuck roast is looking like right now. And I have some parchment paper right over here that I'm gonna put this on and wrap it up before putting it back on the grill. I'm gonna just put it back here. I'll just let it go like just gonna let it go like that close it back down all right so at this point we're gonna wait until it's done we want an internal temperature of about 200 degrees so it's probably gonna take a few more hours I have put some more pellets in the hopper already so I'll be back hopefully I don't get rained on and uh, yeah when I come back it should be done so it has been about three hours and 30 minutes since I wrapped up the chuck roast and put it back on the grill. I've been coming out, checking the temperature, and we just hit about 200 degrees internal. So this is done. I'm going to shut this off. So if you're curious about what the temperature here says right now, it's sitting at about 250. I still have it set at 225, but the thermometer there says it's like 250. Throughout this entire experience, it's fluctuated around about 230 to about 250. So, you know, I guess that's not too bad. Let's open this up. It's still wrapped up there in the parchment paper. So... I'm just going to grab this here, put it right there on the cutting board, and I'm going to let this rest for about uh, 20, 30 minutes. But for now, let's shut this thing down. I'm just going to move it all the way to the off position, close the lid, and I'm going to let it do its thing. So, 
yeah um i'm gonna bring it in the house i'm gonna let it sit and then we'll be able to see what it looks like and taste it i can't wait we're all gonna experience this together hopefully i didn't screw it up so it's been about 30 minutes i've sat here and i've let it rest it's been an all-day cook but now together we're finally going to be able to see what this looks like and what it tastes like and hopefully it turned out pretty good i hope we'll see anyway let's unwrap this from the parchment paper okay so there it is the finished product now a lot of the people that i've seen cook chuck rolls or or brisket online and they always are in such awe of the bark. Look at that bark, it's so nice and dark. I feel like this is like that too, a nice dark bark. It looks horribly burnt, but it's not. It's the way it's supposed to be. Let me smell it. Ah uh, yes, yeah, smells good. It's as much as I'm gonna cut through it. I'm not gonna cut through the whole thing, but let's just take a look at this here. I believe they call this part the smoke ring. It's kind of pulling it apart. All right, moment of truth, let's taste it. <laughs> oh, that's good. And it's tender, and I think that's the whole point of it all. It's tender and it's soft, and it just kind of breaks apart they also do like this they go like oh look how look how limp it is you know it shows how tender it is because it's just so limp you know and it pulls apart really easily it's a little bit of fat right there but yeah it just kind of pulls apart nice and easy and it's really good wow so this smoking experience for the very first time i think this turned out pretty good now, the only thing about smoking meat, I think, is, as you can see, don't do it when you're hungry because it's gonna take forever to cook. It's something that you're gonna to wanna to put on and then let the smoker do the work for the most part and then just know that by the time it's done, kinda of set yourself up so that you can eat around that time. Had a little bit of hiccups at the very beginning. Couldn't quite figure out why the temperature was doing what it's doing. But once it settled in, it stayed very consistent. I look forward to, um, doing this again so yeah that's it guys thank you so much for taking part in my very first smoking food journey and yeah when i smoke something else i'll let you know and i'll do a video about it so i'm gonna give this to my wife we're gonna enjoy this and yeah that's it thank you all so much for watching again and until next time i'm jeremy i'll talk to you later